Okay, so Cynthia, you kind of were talking about actually confronting somebody when you felt them kind of give you that standoffish or, uh, you know, didn't want to maybe get to know you. So you said you actually kind of did confront them. How did that happen? I actually, I was working with a young lady and um, I am who I am. And I am who I am. <laughs> and I do not disguise who I am. But I was kind of new. My book was just coming out. And I didn't want to, you know, burn any ties right. anywhere. But my conscience only allows me to be who I am. So I was going to do a talk show with a young lady, and she sat me down and told me, hey, look, this is like minutes before the talk show. Um, I don't want you to, to explain, to, to tell them anything about, you know, I want to talk about the addiction, but I don't want you to go into any detail about it. You know, um, I want you to present yourself as a strong black author. And I, you know, I'm going to be honest, I took offense to that. No. <laughs> I took offense to that because I thought that she, you know, right. I'm presenting myself as me. That's who I am. I don't, you don't have to prep me to be right. who I am. Right. 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 So, you know, I said, she says, I don't want you know, to, give, to give any horror stories about it or anything Whoa. like that where you will scare any of my audience. Whoa. But me, myself, I felt as though these women need to be scared of addiction. Scared. I'm going to tell them the nitty gritty, but... I'm going to be honest, I lied. I said, okay, you know, <laughs> I said, okay, I'm going to confront her on her own ground. I know, that's right. So I waited until the camera started rolling. <laughs> and then, <laughs> like the law and order music. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing, you know, she had almost scripted what she wanted me to say, like who I was, so. And she had gave me these little paper and I had it, you know, like, because she was real delicate. She really didn't want to do it because of the delicate nature of my book. And so, I, you know, I had the little paper and she says, you know, yeah, we have Cynthia Miller. And I says, she says can you tell us something about you? I said, yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Set that little paper down. <laughs> Boom. Hi, I'm Cynthia Miller. She's a heroin addict for 23 years. Mm -hmm. Be careful how you treat people today. You may, when you pass women up on the streets who are begging, hungry, dirty, because next year this time they could be your boss. I'm Ooh. somebody's boss today. That's so right. that's how I started that. Oh, Ooh, that's <laughs> how. I mean, she was like, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> so late after, you know, as soon as we took an intervention, I did tell her. I said I was offended. You know, I said I was not intimidated by your lack of knowledge on how to handle. Mm -hmm. right. I was not intimidated by that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was not intimidated when I met you. I met her at a play. I approached you. And I thought that you, your, your, just your spirit was stronger mm -hmm. and that you were willing to accept anything that was out here. And addiction is real. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone in this room has someone that has been an addict mm -hmm. or know someone yes. that has been an addict. You know, so this isn't something I wanted to sugarcoat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to apologize to you for lying to you, but I have actually no intentions on sugarcoating. I'm actually going to describe in detail the horrible withdrawal pain that I went through. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want me to do that on your show, then I'll just... So were you able, like, after, after, was that like an intermission that you mm -hmm. guys did that? So did you go back on and... And she told me that she just wasn't prepared for it. She said, I just wasn't prepared she said that. Not receptive, what she, <laughs> <laughs> not receptive <laughs> but she needed the show. Right. <laughs> She was like, well, you know, I didn't want, you know, audience to get the wrong impression of you. I said, they can't get the wrong impression of me. Right. Yeah, like I, yeah I, I am who I am. I, you know, I am who I am. And I'm very strong on that. Because women work hard to come out of the tunnels. You never know what tunnel a person may have came out of. And I personally worked very hard to get out of the play. Right. I, this is April, just on April the 11th. Actually, on um, on April the 11th, I've been in Arizona exactly three years. I came okay. here with no money, a food stamp card with $180 on it. I was I just I'd been clean off of heroin for less than a year. I'd only been clean off of heroin for maybe a few months. Okay, um, I was broke. I had no job, no car. I had nothing but a flash drive that had half of my book written that I had written in jail and one of the officers had sneaked it out to me and told me to go do something with it because he loved it so much. That's all I had and my son at the bus station. You know, I had no friends, no phone numbers. I left the state of California 
so that I could give myself a running start. Mm -hmm. So when you see women, when I embrace women, I don't know what they've been through. Don't I don't know what you've been through. Or I just a few minutes before yeah. I saw you. You don't Bruh, know what, I don't know what you've been through. Right. So I'm going to embrace you as a strong woman. And absolutely, if I know your story is that that you have really been through the storm, I, I want you to tell everybody. I, I might blow your business up. Hey, this is my friend right here. Do you know she was in jail two years ago? You know, that's what I was doing. Right. So that's a sisterhood that she could have built around that. Right. Say, hey. You don't smother that type of thing. I'm proud of you. Right. You can't deny someone the okay. opportunity to share their and that's what I was going to kind of, kind of go back around because it was a point of you <laughs> telling her, but it was constructive criticism. So in sisterhood, we got to have, you know, it's always nice. I know we always want to hear, good job, Audrey. You did this right. You did this right. Good job, Audrey. Good job. But we don't always want somebody to agree and good job. We we don't yes do people, every, yes right. We don't need a bunch of yes people right. around us. I, right. know. I don't. We I need constructive Criticism. So yeah. you call your friends out on the carpet that's 30 years old. I mean, 30 uh, years, 30 year friendship, and you give them constructive criticism, and you're okay with that. It flows easy for you. Yeah, because I just felt like honesty is the best policy. I always felt like when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. And I just like I don't like being around yes people. Like I feel like I can take it. If you can dish it out, you should be able to take it. Mm -hmm. And you want to be around people that that hold, that hold you up. You know, right. I like people that are front, back, and side to side. Cause I know I ain't perfect. I right. know everything. Right. I right. make mistakes. But like, call me out on that because sometimes I can't see everything. I can't hear everything, and I can't feel everything. So how about that? Right. I'm right. out here slipping, tripping. Let me know, Michelle. Right. Stop that, girl. Yeah. Okay. I'm a, I can take it. Not everybody can take it. And not everybody can. I can take it. Right. Not everybody. That's can how take I that. am. Hit me over the head with yeah. our cry about lady. And thank you to right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, grown, grown really fond of this term I use a lot called accountability partner. Yes. I, when I'm involved in building a relationship mm -hmm. with someone, mm -hmm. I make it very clear that mm -hmm. that's the type of person okay. I am. Mm -hmm. So if you say to me, my goal is X, mm -hmm. and you out there doing your thing, and you're not fulfilling your goal, mm -hmm. and you're doing things that are counterproductive mm -hmm. to your goal, mm -hmm. I will share that with you. Right. That's because right. you said to me, I trust you to be my accountability partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I can do that. I can do that. And then I try to solicit that same from people that are around me or right. close to me that can do that. Because not everybody, you're right, not everyone can do that. Right. Not everyone can do it. And you also have to come from a, and I don't want to sound, you know, mushy, but you have to come from a kind of gentler place yeah. in your heart mm -hmm. to be able to do that. You and I had a situation yeah. similar to that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, this would be really, really helpful, right, if we did this. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, I can take that and run with it. And I went back to Xavier and I, told, I said, this is what she told me. And I felt, to, I felt grateful yeah. that you told yeah. me that yeah. because... Maybe I would have thought about two years from now, but I need it now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, and I need it now. You know what I'm saying? I didn't to that, but yeah. you, 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 once you told me that, my mind really it's started expanding. Yeah. Yeah. So I am grateful yeah. that you told me that, Audrey, well, what about this? I like this, but I think you should probably expand on this also. If you did this, I could use it like this. Right. And other, but like this, I may not be able to use it. Correct. But if the goal is for us to use it, I need these things. And, and that's you what you that. And I'm gonna tell you, I, I actually thought long and hard about how do I do that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we're still building our relationship. Absolutely. We're in the sisterhood, but right. we're still right. building on that. Right. So I didn't want to destroy that, but I said I gotta tell her. That's but how do I do it? What words do I use? Lord, give me the right words. Right. Because mm -hmm. I need I need for her to know this so that we can continue I heard, as to you, work on as this. you know, I heard it. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my most recent yeah. example of having to do that. Yeah. But I've had um, other situations where, you know, and it just kind of depends on the level of, of um, I don't know, disrespect mm -hmm. or, or, you know, whatever it is. There's some situations I won't even broach it. I'll be just like, you know what? Mm, I'm not taking the phone call. Okay. I, she don't even deserve an explanation. Right. Right. Because that was so wrong. Yeah. That was so wrong. <laughs> Ooh, that's so true. You don't even deserve an explanation from me. Because you right. know that was wrong. Why? Right. You know. You know it was wrong. Right. And you did it anyway. Right. Publicly. 
Mm. Right. So we just gonna go ahead and push that to right. the side, and you'll never get another phone call from me. Huh. That reminds me, and then I'll ask you. We can. I'll ask you guys to. I'll answer this. In a sisterhood, you know, we we're all pretty close in age, a few years difference or whatever. But we do accountability. Yes. In some instances, we see a lot of young women coming up. You know, doing their thing. Mm -hmm. Got a good running start. I yeah. look at them and say. Wow, you know, I started my family younger and maybe waited a little bit longer in life, but I love seeing young women because I think about, oh, when I was 21, yes. I, you know, and it's just invigorating to see that. Yes. But how do we, because some of the lingo and some of how women, even the way we grew up, is a little different. Mm -hmm. And that's yes, kind of a whole nother show. Yes. So, yes. You know, yes. Yes. <laughs> we, so how do we hold or how do we nurture or? bring them into sisterhood or hold them accountable, call them on the carpet, constructive criticism to a, maybe a younger woman that we see, maybe need just a little molding that we see maybe something we can help them with. Well, I personally experienced that a lot um, because I have a daughter that now lives with me that's 17, a daughter that I had not seen since she was, a, that I had not, had not lived with me since she was a baby. So I definitely, and she grew up in a rough area. She went through a couple of foster homes. So she's definitely been tuned a little different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, we've had our, you know, our challenges. Right, right. However, the way I, I find to deal with her is just straight out. Mm -hmm. And when she first came to me, she, oh my goodness, she complained to everyone about me, you know. Oh, she finds everything wrong with me. She's so rude. She's tasteless. She's tacky. She's you know, but I found out, I, I had to feel in my heart that if this, and because she's my daughter, her relationship with me means something to me. Mm -hmm. right. And not only does it mean something to me, her relationship with me, her relationship with the world means something to me. Sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I have found that a lot of these younger women, and I'm not saying anything towards any woman right. in particular, right. but a lot of them don't understand and, you know, excuse my French, but this is my favorite saying with her. Classy ass be fast ass any day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so now if you're, that, that, and that's the truth. And so I, I'm constantly, it's a constant st struggle with her. Like every few minutes when I'm in her company, I have to, hey, uh, go, hey, don't, don't do that. You know, so now she works for me, you know, and she knows how funny I am about respect and how you, how you present yourself and stuff. So she knows she has to keep that reputation up. Right. And I know that if she can keep it up for four hours of the day with me, that eventually she'll have it for six it hours, right. she'll have there it for ten hours. You know, and what I do now, and I have book events, I say, okay, now we have an event. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> now what you need to do mm -hmm. is yeah. have all the books set up this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you need to be careful. I don't want you, I want you to be careful. These are adults you're dealing with, even though she's 17. Mm -hmm. But we can't go around criticizing these young girls, you know. You know, right. you can't be out here sleeping with me. You can't be out here doing this and doing that. If you haven't given them something else to do. Right. We have to give our young people something else to do. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're not doing nothing but putting ourselves on a haughty horse. Well, you know, I grew up at a different time. And right. I don't dress like that. And I don't act like that. But what am I doing? You know, I'm criticizing them. I have to show them who I am. I have to help them to find who they are. You see, they're not going to find who they are doing the same thing they're doing. So we have to give them a direction to go in. Right. And then if you, you know, if somebody knows, if somebody tells me, you know, hey, drive to Michigan. And somebody says, it's that way. And you start looking over there and you start saying, oh, you know what? I do want to go skiing. And you take a step. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's kind of close to Canada. And you take a step. Mm -hmm. But if somebody just says, you know what you need to do is you need to just go and stay up in Michigan where you can do better. Like, I don't want to stay there. And what's there for me? And what's there for me? <laughs> so you have to show people something better. 